The AMD Ryzen 9000 series of processors are on the horizon, and the excitement around these upcoming processors is starting to ramp up a little bit. As with any major product launch, there's a mix of confirmed information, rumors, and just some wild speculation. And our goal today is to break down everything we know so far, separating fact from fiction. Whether you're a hardcore PC enthusiast, a gamer looking for the next big upgrade, or just curious about cutting edge tech, this video is the one for you. But before we jump into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. My PC's almost ready, I just need to get a cooler, but I'm kind of a bit low on cash now. What am I gonna do? <laughs> The Liquid Freezer 3 from Arctic. It's available in up to 420ml, and you can have it with or without RGB. And it comes with a six year warranty. And it's cheaper than all other AIOs on the market. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Hold on a minute. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 3. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. So first, a quick recap on the Ryzen 7000 and 8000 series. Before we delve into the future, I want to take a quick look back at AMD's previous Ryzen 7000 and 8000 series. Launched in 2022 and 2024 respectively, these processors marked significant leaps in performance, power efficiency and overall value. The Ryzen 7000 series, based on the Zen 4 architecture, introduced a refined 5 nanometer process, delivering impressive IPC gains, better energy efficiency, and support for PCI Express 5.0, and of course, DDR5. The Ryzen 7000 series was, well, frankly, a game changer, offering substantial performance improvements over the previous generations. With up to 16 cores and 32 threads, these processors excelled in both multi-threaded and single-threaded workloads, making them ideal for gamers, content creators, and professionals alike. Now, the introduction of PCI Express 5.0 and DDR5 support also meant that it future-proofed these processors, allowing users to take full advantage of the latest hardware advancements. Additionally, the Ryzen 7000 series featured X3D models, which utilized 3D vCache technology to significantly boost gaming performance by stacking additional cache on top of the CPU die, resulting in reduced latency and, of course, improved frame rates in gaming. Now, the Ryzen 8000 series didn't exactly get the same fanfare, it was a bit of a refresh, and that series took things, I guess, a little step further with enhanced performance and efficiency, but not really much else. AMD's focus on refining the 4 nanometer process resulted in even higher clock speeds and better power management, but it didn't really resonate with the consumer base. This series also introduced advanced AI-driven features such as improved machine learning capabilities and more intelligent resource management. These enhancements not only boosted performance, but also improved the overall user experience, making the Ryzen 8000 series, I guess, a compelling choice on paper for a wide range of applications, though there were no X3D models being manufactured as part of the 8000 series, so most people just stuck with that and bought a 7800X3D. On top of this, the iGPU was improved with increased core counts with the 8700G packing 12 graphics cores, which was actually a significant leap from the generations before. But I still don't actually know anyone who bought an 8000 series. Now talking about both the 7000 and the 8000, as good as these processors were, they weren't without their, let's say, challenges. Compatibility issues with older motherboards and the inevitable power consumption concerns as core counts and clock speeds increased were some of the key challenges faced by the Ryzen 7000 and 8000 series. Now AMD addressed many of these issues through BIOS updates and improved power management features, but these challenges highlighted, I guess, the need for continued innovation and refinement, which I guess in a roundabout way brings us on to the 9000 series. So what do we actually know so far? Obviously, AMD did do some announcements at Computex, but they didn't really give too much away. And yes, you can find out all of the specifications on their website, but I want to drill just a little bit further. So let's break it down into sections to make it easier to understand, starting with confirmed information. First up, the architecture. The Ryzen 9000 series will be based on the new Zen 5 architecture. This new architecture promises significant advancements over Zen 4, focusing on even greater efficiency and performance, as you'd expect. Zen 5 is anticipated to bring refined power management and also enhanced AI capabilities, again, making it a powerhouse for both gamers and professional users. Though there is no increase in core and thread counts from each model before. 
In terms of the manufacturing process, AMD is continuing its partnership with TSMC, utilizing a refined version of the four nanometer process node instead of a three nanometer process, which should still give better power efficiency and performance over the predecessors. And each generation, we do actually see strong gains across the board. So this collaboration seems to be a winning formula for AMD. And I guess with Intel essentially playing catch up, they don't really need to push things too far. Now, the Zen 5 architecture is expected to introduce several key innovations. These include a new microarchitecture design that focuses on improving the instructions per clock, or IPC, higher clock speeds, but you don't actually get that yet, and better overall efficiency. This means that users can expect significant performance gains across a wide range of applications from gaming to professional workloads. And the reason I said about the higher clock speed is when you compare it against Ryzen 7000, well, technically it's actually slower but IPC should be better. So yeah, you'll have to wait and see for benchmarks. Now, one of the most exciting aspects of the Zen 5 architecture is its focus on AI capabilities. AMD has been investing, like many other big brands, quite heavily in AI and machine learning technologies. And the Ryzen 9000 series is expected to reflect this investment. Enhanced AI capabilities could include more intelligent resource management, improved machine learning performance, and new AI-driven features for both gaming and productivity. And this is why AMD have not only announced the Ryzen Desktop 9000 series, but also the Ryzen AI 300 series too. So when can we expect these processors to be released? Well, while there hasn't been an official announcement specifically stating a date, AMD have confirmed that DIY customers and SI partners will have the new chips available in July of this year. So not long to go, but we are actually hearing that you might not be able to buy them until closer towards September time. So it's all kind of up in the air. So what about the rumors? Well, the specs are already out there, so you can take from that what you will, but you don't know anything about performance. Now, as always, of course, these should be taken with a grain of salt until AMD makes an official announcement about anything to do with performance. But it's always fun to kind of dissect into things. Now, one of the most talked about rumors is the significant performance improvement expected with the Ryzen 9000 series. Early leaks and industry analysts suggested that these processes could see a 30 to 50% performance improvement over the 8000 series. This leap will be driven mainly by architectural improvements. Imagine running the latest AAA titles at max settings without a single stutter due to your CPU not limiting you. Or for content creators, rendering 8K videos in a fraction at a time. While these figures sound exciting, I mean, they are, but at this stage, speculative and all of that, and if history has actually taught us anything, we're actually likely to see around 15 to 16% in terms of an uplift which is still nice to see and similar to what we have seen on other generational uplifts. But at this point, who knows? 30 to 50% would be frankly amazing and would likely spell big trouble for Intel. But in all honesty, it's highly, highly unlikely. Now, in terms of cores and threads, there were whispers before the official announcement about the flagship featuring up to 24 cores and 48 threads. But this has obviously now been debunked by AMD directly, as the flagship Ryzen 9 9950X is now confirmed to have the same 16 cores and 32 threads, as we saw in the 7950X. So when compared, the only difference actually comes by way of a 200 megahertz less base clock, while core counts, boost clock, and cache size remain the same. So AMD really are hedging their bets on the four nanometer process and that all important IPC improvement, because for someone, I guess, not in the know, the 9950X actually looks to be worse than the 7950X on paper. So yeah, it's gonna be a hard sell, but I guess it actually works out really well for us when we're doing benchmarking, because that's where, I guess, the results are gonna come from. That's what you're gonna be able to take from it. Now, in terms of connectivity, there was always rumors about improved PCIe 5.0 support and improved DDR5 memory support, but there really isn't too much there either. You get the same amount of lanes on both the 7950X and the 9950X and the same amount of USB ports. The only things that have really changed is the max memory capacity has now been increased from 128 gig to 192 gig and from 5200 megahertz up to 5600 megahertz, though overclocking negates that anyway. The likely reason for this is the implementation of different capacity kits from memory manufacturers with 24 and 48 gig modules. So no real big change, but I don't know, at least it's something. Additionally, there were rumors about enhanced support for USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4, offering faster data transfer speeds and improved compatibility with a wide range of peripherals. While this is partly true, it's more down to the motherboard and not so much the CPU. So yes, you may get USB 4, like with MSI's X870 boards, of which they're claiming all will come with USB 4, but that's not down to the processor itself and the bandwidth, that is down to the motherboard. So 
So what are we actually likely to see from these new CPUs? Well, starting with power consumption, and well, there really isn't much to say beyond the fact that it should, should be lower, at least in theory. When you compare the 7950X and the 9950X against each other, they both sport a TDP of 170 watts. But with the 9000 series being fabricated on the 4 nanometer process, performance versus performance, you should see better power efficiency and lower temperatures. But with anything, when headroom is opened up, AMD will want to take advantage of it and eke more performance out, essentially ridding themselves of any gains in power in exchange for performance. They've got this much headroom, and then they go, no, let's pack more performance. So you just lose it completely. Hopefully you're following me on that one. Now with power comes heat, and with heat, you need cooling. Now there were rumors about new cooling solutions specifically designed for the Ryzen 9000 series that could have included improved air and liquid coolers, as well as new thermal management technologies that would help maintain optimal performance, even under heavy loads. But again, that just doesn't seem to be the case. With Zen 5 sporting the same AM5 socket, we may see some tweaks here and there to coolers, maybe some more heat pipes or the addition of vapor chamber technology like we've recently seen from Deepcool, but nothing really beyond that because, well, in all honesty, from this front, it's not all that different. Now, the big one, and I think this is the big one actually because this is the one that is going to tell you straight away whether you're going to buy one or not, pricing. I think it's safe to say that the cost of the 9000 series will be around the same as what the 7000 series was when that launched. Though we do have some confirmation, as we normally do, from retailers around the world, such as Funtech, a retailer based in Slovenia who has listed all four models of 9000 series processors, albeit in euros, but that's pretty easy to translate to between around $300 for the lower end Ryzen 5 and then all the way up to $600 or so for the top end 9950X. So pricing wise, it could actually come out a little bit cheaper than the 7000 series, and that could be good for competition. Now in terms of competition, what does this actually mean for Intel? Historically, Intel has been the dominant player in the CPU market, but AMD has been gaining ground with each successive rise and release. With the aggressive advancements expected from AMD's Zen 5 architecture, Intel will face even more pressure to keep up in both the high-end and mid-range segments. But with Intel's multi-chiplet designed Arrow Lake processors on the way, things could start heating up towards the end of the year. And this is great for us as consumers, as it means we get more choice and in theory, more aggressive pricing, especially when you consider how much some of the Ryzen 7000 series have dropped in price since their launch. And you know what? I'm all for saving money. Now, one thing AMD does have going for it is platform compatibility. Intel has been known to change socket compatibility a lot more frequently than AMD, potentially requiring users to upgrade their motherboards more often. In contrast, AMD's commitment to backward compatibility could make the Ryzen 9000 series a more attractive option for users looking to upgrade their processors without replacing their entire system. Though, to play devil's advocate, because, you know, I love doing that. Intel did keep DDR4 support for the 14th gen, while AMD axed it when they moved up to AM5. So it was kind of a clear cut one there. If you wanted DDR4, you had to stay where you were or go Intel. Now in terms of comparisons, it's too early to tell and sometimes it's impossible to call, especially when you look at the facts and figures like how Intel use a different fabrication process to AMD and how they currently have performance cores and efficiency cores. It's like comparing apples to oranges. So for that, you just have to wait to see some glorious benchmarks from ourselves when different processors launch. Now, in terms of gaming, Intel's processors have traditionally held a slight edge due to their strong single-threaded performance and high clock speeds until AMD's X3D CPUs came along with the 5800X3D and then improved on that with Zen 4, namely with the 7800X3D. But even AMD themselves have stated that Ryzen 9000 won't beat the previous generation X3D models in gaming, but they will get close. And apparently some really cool updates to X3D are coming, but they wanna bring something new to the fold and not just, I guess, rehash what they've already done. I guess the gains need to be significant enough to warrant making a big song and dance out of it. Otherwise, what's the point in doing it? You're just taking money kind of from the consumers and not really giving them anything in return. I think for now, AMD will be more focused on pushing the marketing message home about what and why you should upgrade to the 9000 series. Because like I said, on paper, there really isn't too much to shout about when it comes to the specs. It's all very samey, especially with the 9950X having a slower base clock than the 7950X. For the average consumer, they're potentially going to feel like AMD are pulling the wall over their eyes. But who knows, maybe AMD have some done, I don't know, something amazing with balancing performance improvements with power efficiency. 
because as processors become more powerful, they also tend to consume more power and generate more heat. So AMD may have a battle on their hands there, though while I am expecting more heat, I don't think it will be well, anything of significance. So there you have it. Everything we kind of, I guess, know so far about the upcoming AMD Ryzen 9000 series. It's an interesting one because there is still so much unknown right now. Specs and on paper, things look well, a bit drab but that all important improvement in IPC could make a huge difference, even if it is probably more conservative, around 15 to 16% and not 30 to 50%, like most rumors are kind of touting at the moment. I guess that will be revealed on benchmark day, so make sure you're subscribed for that. Also, let me know, are you actually excited about the Ryzen 9000 series or have you only just changed over to the 7000 series? Do you plan on upgrading to one of these new processors or are you happy with your current setup? Maybe you've got a 7800X3D and you are a hardcore gamer. And I think probably a lot of our viewers are actually in that camp. And for you, I guess there really is no need to upgrade. But from a workload perspective, I guess we could actually see some uplifts. The question is, by how much? If you are gonna buy a Ryzen 9000 series CPU, also, which model were you actually eyeing up? Are you gonna go for the high-end Ryzen 9 9950X that I've pretty much spoke about sort of solely today with all the bells and whistles or perhaps a more budget-friendly mid-range option. I think maybe the Ryzen 5 is going to be the better seller out of all of them. It generally is, with the exception of the 7800X3D, which just threw a spanner in my whole kind of thinking then. Also, with Intel due to release after the Zen 5 launch, do you think they may pull it out of the bag and stick the fight back to AMD in the DIY desktop market? Like I said, competition is good and hopefully that means we can all get a good deal on some new tech. So that's gonna wrap this one up. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub would be amazing. And if you love what we do, you can help support us over on Patreon, where you also get a ton of really, really cool benefits, including exclusive behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, access to our testing data, and so much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in, I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys, bye bye.